keys. I heard something to my right, and when I looked, I saw the back door closing and some tall man stepping inside. Whoa! It was not my dad. It was a stranger. What the heck? Accompanied by a creak of the bed springs, I then realized I hadn't checked under my bed like an idiot. GG's. It felt like I was gonna vomit, and I leaned off the side of my bed and peered underneath. No! No! Oh! What is good, you guys? My name is B Bellinger. Welcome back with another video. It has been about two weeks since y'all see me. Hope you guys are having a great day, guys. Um, yeah. Three disturbing true thunderstorm horror stories. Bruh, usually a thunderstorm inside the house. So you know some nonsense is gonna happen inside the home. <laughs> I don't know what the heck is gonna happen. Why would anybody want to be outside during a thunderstorm? Unless if you're that crazy and you like seeing thunderstorms like that, then that's up to you. But yeah, let's get right into this video. The month of August is full of thunderstorms where I live, which inspired this video topic. I was at a ripe young age where being left home alone was exciting. I was like 13 and my parents had just recently started entrusting me to be home alone overnight. The only condition was I couldn't leave the house or have anyone over, but I was fine with that. Something about being able to blast my music or video games without my dad yelling at me was just exhilarating. Yep. To make things even better, it, it was it a rainy like night freedom. which turned into a thunderstorm. I sat outside under the awning for a while, watching the thunderstorm as I like to do. I've always loved thunderstorms, as they just make staying in so much more cozy. Mm -hmm. After a while of watching the storm, I moved my Xbox from my room to the downstairs den TV. My dad's huge flat screen TV with the Bose sound system. The only time I'd get to game on there was when I was home alone, and I loved it. The den was a half flight of stairs down from the living room level, and it was level with the backyard, so the backyard door was in the den. I'm describing the house in past tense because I moved out, but my parents do still live there. Okay. So I was playing Black Ops down in the den with the volume blasting. I was playing online multiplayer in a party with my friend Cody. I had some crappy old headset, which the yep. only audio you could hear was other people in the lobby and game talking. Yep. For a 13-year-old standards, it was the perfect night. Until something interrupted my peace. What do you mean? The sound of the doorbell. Nah. It was past 9 o'clock by then. Don't open it. I told it. Cody the doorbell rang, and he said I should go check and see who it was. No, don't. I wondered if maybe it was my parents back home early. Why your parents will never ring the doorbell, bro? Unless if they're texting you first saying, hey, we're gonna ring the doorbell, bring, come outside or whatever. Bro, they have the keys. No, they wouldn't ring the doorbell. This is sus. I hid in a spot in the game where I wouldn't get killed. Then I went upstairs to the front door, asking who's there. I didn't realize how much of a mistake that would be. Yeah. A male's voice on the other side said, I need to use a phone. Nope. I didn't know what to do. Nice so I didn't try. answer and went back downstairs. Nice try. But it was too late. The damage was done, and I let whoever was out there know I was home. Bruh. I told Cody about it, and his reaction was simply, GGs. yo, what the fuck? He agreed with me that I shouldn't open the door, but the doorbell rang again. Oh. Cody said to ignore it. That was the last time I heard the doorbell. Call the police. And after a while, I relaxed again, as it seemed whoever was out there had left. Nope. I can't explain the roller coaster of emotions I felt that night. One moment I'm on edge, the next, I'm relaxed and back into the fantasy world of my game. <laughs> and then, as I was most at ease, I heard something to my right. And when I looked, I saw the back door closing and some tall man stepping inside. Whoa! It was not my dad. It was a stranger. What the heck? That quickly? How the heck did he get inside your place? How the heck did he get inside your house? Nah, bro. You, you left the door unlocked when your parents left? Oh my goodness, who is this kid? Oh, how dumb can you be? I dropped the controller and ran for the office door, and the cord to the headset quickly ripped out of the controller. I made it to the office and slammed the door shut, and I'm by no means exaggerating when I say the second after I locked the door, the door handle aggressively shook as the man on the other side tried opening the door. Wow. The office had two doors in it, one that led to the den, and one that led to the garage. My only chance to escape the house was to go through the garage. But before even moving, I just stood still, waiting for something to happen on the other side of the door. Mm. Seconds felt like minutes. The man knocked on the door and said, Little boy, 
I just need to use your phone. Then why are you chasing me? Why are you chasing me if you need to use the phone? The phone is in the kitchen. Use it. Get the frick out. Actually, don't use my phone with your dirty, crusty old hands. Just get out of my house. Stranded out in the rain. His knocks Sucks turned to, to pounce suck. as his voice got louder and angrier sounding. Sucks to suck. He gradually turned to yelling and pounding. Get stranded he more open in the, the rain. door, you little shit. As oh. it sounded like he was literally trying to break down the door. Oh. I had no choice but to go through the garage. I pressed the button to open the garage door, and it was so loud and slow to open that I prayed the man couldn't hear it. As soon as it was up about halfway, I crawled under and ran through the storm a few doors down to our neighbor Julian's house, Crazy. who I knew well because I used to play with his dog Copper when I was little. Wow. I heard Copper barking as I rang the bell, looking back in my house, hoping not to see someone coming down the block. That would be crazy. Julian opened the door, and I ran into his arms, begging him for help, as his wife came out of the kitchen in confusion. When I told them of the break-in, their demeanors instantly changed. Julian got the police on the phone and handled getting them to my parents' house. It was a long, long wait before the police were outside, and Steve and I went out to them. I told them the same thing I told Steve. And after they asked which door was unlocked, I said the garage. A couple of them went through the garage into the house, and after maybe five minutes, they came outside with a man in handcuffs. Wow! They made sure he didn't see my face. He was still there? After he was in a police car, they asked me if I knew that man, and I said, no, of course I don't know that man. He had been telling the officers that this was his house and that I was his son. I could tell he was drunk, what? Or high, or Is he just generally crazy based on the things he was yelling and the way he was acting. Oh, heck He no. was brought to jail, and my parents had to be contacted regarding how they wished to proceed, and they pressed charges. Good. His name was John McCarty. He got charged for, I believe, criminal trespass. It didn't make me feel any safer that that man would one day be out and know where I lived. Thankfully, it was just a random chance encounter. I don't believe he specifically targeted me or our house. So whenever he was released, he didn't come back. Thank God. He should have never even said anything. Like, oh my goodness, bro. How did he get inside your place? Oh, lock your doors, guys. Please lock your doors. Please. Never thought in a million years that anything truly horrific would ever happen to me. I'm an average person with a boring enough life that anything out of the ordinary was really out of the ordinary. This is why I was always okay with watching or listening to those creepypasta and true horror stories on YouTube. I still do watch them often, but after my own experience, these stories scared me in a whole new way. <laughs> it was late wow. at night, I'd say around 4am, but I don't really know for sure. 4 everyone else in my house was asleep, oh my, my mother goodness. and both of my grandparents. 4 a.m. For the past two months or so, we get at least one major thunderstorm per week, and it just so happened that this one decided to start earlier that night. Now, I always enjoy a good thunderstorm, especially at night when you can go sit by a window and just watch the lightning. What? There's something about the wind of them always creeped me out. That's weird. Maybe the fact that it could be soft or deafening and switch between the two almost instantly. Boy, I have but my... For some reason... I have my blinds closed, bro. I don't care what type of thunderstorm it is. I'm, I'm having my blinds all the way closed, locked. Everything locked. The heck? And has always Why given me huge creeps. Looking at thunderstorms now, this like night's thunderstorm was one of the worst we'd had in a long time. It what sounded like world? rocks were hitting my window all night, but I was enjoying listening to it while I browsed Reddit, as I do. And all <laughs> of a sudden, the power went out in the blink of an eye. This was kind of creepy, but That's I didn't crazy. really mind, because I had my data and a decent charge on my phone, they so I continued matter. browsing. After a little while, I started to get tired, so I figured it was time to shut my phone off and get some sleep. Close the blinds. I placed it on the side table next to me. Look, look at it, look at it. You have your blinds still wide the heck open, bro. Close your blinds, close all your doors, windows, vents, lock everything. Have you done that before you hit the hay? And rolled over to go to sleep. I guess I passed out shortly after because I don't remember anything in between the rain hammering at my window and the eerie silence of a soft wind outside. I assume the rain stopped while I was asleep. I rolled over to get more comfortable because my side was hurting, and then I realized just how parched for water I was. I took a few minutes to try and fall back asleep again, but it didn't happen. My mouth was just too dry. I sat up, grabbed my phone, and turned on the flashlight so I could have a source of light to the kitchen to grab a glass of water and go back to bed. All right. As I opened my bedroom door, I was smacked in the face with a blast of cold air. 
It was freezing in the living room. Oh, someone, you left the window open, bro. Why didn't you lock the window before you go to bed? Now someone's entered into your crib. Oh my goodness. You cannot be for real right now. I quickly threw on a sweater and continued to the kitchen. As I was nearing it, I could hear the wind becoming louder and the temperature become colder. I reached the kitchen and walked in, grabbed a glass from the cupboard, and started to fill it with water from the tap. I took a quick glance around the kitchen and noticed something weird. The door to the patio was left open. Wow! Naturally, I was weirded out by this and a little wow. scared thinking of how that could happen. How? I ended up rationalizing to myself that my grandfather must have left it open earlier that night and Are just forgot about me? it. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I walked me? over to the sliding door, glanced over my shoulder out of paranoia, and slid it shut and locked it. I fast walked back to my room just in case. I opened my door and closed it behind me, and then laid back down in bed, my glass of water on my side table and flashlight still in hand. I was able to calm myself down slightly, enough to turn off the flashlight and try to get some shut eye. Something inside of me wasn't letting me forget the possibility that there might be someone in my house. Yep. I got back out of bed again and slid my chair from my desk to my door in an attempt to keep someone out. Wow. I then checked the closet again, just in case. I laid back down again and kept my flat. Yeah, bro, you feel like there's someone in your room? Have you checked under your bed? Have you checked under your bed, bro? Once? You're checking everywhere but under your bed. I know you scared, bro. You scared, bro. You you scared to check under your bed and some creepy dude says, "Hey." Ah, oh, man. Oh, this is creepy. This is crazy, bro. Uh, I would I would have I would do you know what I would do? I would act like nothing happened. Go back outside or go back uh leave the room. Call the police and then they'll just check the uh, <laughs> they'll just check the the bed for me, bro, because I ain't checking that thing. Right on as a sort of nightlight this time. Then, the most disturbing thing that's ever happened to me occurred. I felt a slight bump come from under my bed. Oh! Oh! Oh, this is, this is, nah. Yep, GG's. GG's, buddy. GG's. Accompanied by a creak of the bed springs, I then realized I hadn't checked under my bed like an idiot. GG's. It felt like I was gonna vomit, and I leaned off the side of my bed and peered underneath. No! Oh! Oh my freaking, oh my, yo, what is that? That, nah, this is, you disgusting human being. Oh, nah, bro, I'm not dealing with this. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, that got me. Yeah, that got me. This is disgusting. Who is, bro, look at your, look at your old wrinkly hands. What the heck? What the heck? I rebuke you. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. What is this? Oh, you, you, you didn't even check to see that everything was locked in your house. You never even checked to see that every door, window, vent was locked in your house. Now look, you have this creepy old white woman under your bed. GG's. What do you do in this situation? Like, what do you, what can you possibly do? Kick it? No. You run. Call the police. Police! Help! Police! Help! And just pray that you... It doesn't chase after you. Oh my goodness, this is crazy. Saw the disturbing sight of an extremely unhealthily skinny woman. With That's blood. crazy. That means that some old drug addict type woman randomly just came into your place. That's crazy, how? Shot eyes and yellow teeth staring back at me. She was smiling an ungodly grin that I still can't get out of my head. Nasty. She stared at me for at least three seconds. Yeah, that's I was creepy. still trying to process what I was seeing. That's Before creepy. she, I swear to God, cackled like a fucking witch. Wow. At this point, my whole brain was screaming nope. And I leapt out of my bed towards bed. my door, moved the chair as fast as possible, and sprinted down the hall to my grandparents' room. Crazy. I banged on the door as loud as I could while calling for my grandfather. He was out within seconds and he had a gun in his hand. Something he had never even mentioned having in the house. What? Man came out within seconds with a gun. <laughs> he, he, <laughs> yeah, W grandfather, House. W grandfather. We ran to my room, 
him in front of my grandmother and I. Wow. We just barely caught a glimpse of a white figure running away from the bedroom window. That's crazy. My grandfather took a shot, presuming as a warning to tell them to never come back. Oh, we didn't I would have shot it. The police the because heck? we figured they wouldn't be able to do anything. I would since shoot we don't have the security witch. cameras or have any idea who she even was. No hesitation. All I can guess was that this woman was dangerously ill and saw my bedroom light on before the power went out. Yeah. I have no <laughs> idea what her intentions were or if she even knew what she was doing. We're getting the windows and doors in the house installed with locks sometime the next week. Oh, Just... you, you don't even have locks on your windows. Wow, you don't even have them. So they can just come in whenever. That is crazy. Safety. And all I can say is, even if you live in a safe area or a trusted community, bad things still can and do happen. Of course. You always have to take precautions against such things. Of course, bro. We live in a world where people can come in at any moment. It was August. My girl Cass and I went upstate for a little weekend getaway at my family's rustic mobile home. It has running water, electricity, and a toilet. So we call it luxury camping. The home is very small, about 600 square feet. One bedroom, one pull-out couch in the living room, one bathroom, and a very small kitchen. Despite its remote location, there's lots to do, including archery, shooting, dirt biking, and off-roading. We had a whole little itinerary planned for the weekend. Friday, we mostly just unpacked and went out to eat, went grocery shopping, then relaxed. Saturday, we did most of the stuff I just mentioned before, until it started getting really cloudy out, like storm clouds. We also could feel it in the air that a big storm was brewing, so we put all the stuff we took out back into the outbuilding. We put a movie into the DVD player as we cooked dinner. At some point while we were eating, we heard the sudden torrential downpour of rain on the roof of the home. Pretty soon, there were loud, thunderous crashes of lightning almost directly overhead. We both wanted to go sit outside and enjoy it as we ate. What? We relaxed on the deck outside under Who the Who does this, bro? Who honestly does this? It's like a white thing? There's gotta be a white thing, bro. There's no way a black man is gonna be out on the porch when it's raining, eating their food, enjoying the rain and the thunderstorms. There's no way a black man does this, bro. There's gotta be white people and white people only. There's gotta be the Caucasians, bro. There can't be, it can't be no black man. <laughs> it can't be no black man, that's for sure. Nah, let me know if, do you guys do this? Like, let me know in the comment section because I don't hear, I, I, bro, I didn't know this was a thing. You know, so I thought people do this inside their home at least. Amazing view of the sky. Long bolts of lightning constantly lit up the dark night sky, the thunder booming almost instantly after the lightning strikes. Well, we were right in the heart of the storm. And then, we heard something out in the woods. It was a voice. A what? loud voice, seemingly calling out something, but it was nowhere near discernible. What so the, the place is really remote, like I said. Hearing any other voices nearby would already set off alarms in normal conditions, but during a storm like- Very remote, so you can't even call the police even if you wanted to. So, run back inside, make sure everything is locked in your house, grab the gun that you should have, and be prepared for what is gonna come, bro. Cause something's coming after you. This, it was extremely concerning. Yep. We had to assume that it was a lost hiker or something. Nope. I stepped over to the edge of the deck, getting a little wet as the rain blew in under the edge of the canopy. With the constant crashing of thunder and lightning, there were moments of light in the vicinity that allowed me to see just far enough away to the tree line where the woods began. There was a person out there, clear as day. I told Cass, and she instantly freaked out, thinking I was joking and telling yeah. her to stop. GG's. I considered calling out, asking if they needed help. I decided against it on the grounds that I was kind of scared. This weekend was my idea though, and I did kind of drag Cass up here. I didn't want to ruin the experience freaking her out. I went back to her and said I think it's a hiker. She asked if we should offer some help. No. And I said not unless they come knocking on the door. No. I told her we should go inside, and I nudged her in. I went back over to the edge of the deck just out of curiosity. I got even wetter as I looked around until I spotted something. It looked like a person again, much closer to the deck, like a lot closer, only about 20 feet away now. Crazy. I continued to look until a quick flash of lightning briefly exposed a man standing there, confirming my suspicion. Yep. He was wearing bright colors and almost... Call the police. Grab your gun. 
Call the police, grab your gun. Call the police, grab your hunting rifle. Police! Police! Help! Police! Help! Police! Help! It's time. It's time to fight. It's time to stand. It looked white. He was just standing still. That was the scariest part. He wasn't like even Jason. approaching the deck or anything. Yep, like Jason. I went inside and quickly locked the door. Yep. Cassidy saw the worry in my face. I felt my heart racing, and I almost felt nauseous. Lock the I'm door. I'm sure I almost stuttered as I said, I don't know who that is. And then I saw the worry in Cass's eyes worsen. I did my best to keep her calm, telling her to expect someone knocking on the door asking for help. I said they probably just need shelter from the storm. I tell you, it was the longest five minutes ever, Bro, just stop. sitting and listening to the pouring rain and lightning outside, stop. before we felt and heard the footsteps outside on the deck, even over the sound of the storm. The home doesn't have a doorbell, so we expected a knock on the door, but instead, there was this weird shuffling sound on the other side of the lone wooden door. Here we it go. It sounded like attempts at opening it. Here we go. It was go. at this point that the worry I had been feeling had peaked. I Did you lock your door? Bro, I'm still asking these questions. I'm sorry if I'm being annoying. But seriously, did you lock your door? Did you close every window, every vent, every curtain in your home? Did you, do you have your gun out? I don't even hear you saying that, okay, I grabbed the gun. Nothing. You didn't bring no gun? No weapon with you? I think I felt an adrenaline rush at this point. Stupidness. Cass was already in the bedroom hiding at this point, and she was quietly calling for me to come. The noises at the door stopped, but there was never a single knock. I went to the bedroom and told Cass to just remain quiet. I'll be back in the room in a second. I wanted to look out the window. Why? I went back to the living room and Are turned off the lamp. Are you stupid? I took a second to just breathe before yanking the curtain open. I looked out the window and I saw the white figure of the man running away from the window and quickly disappearing. Dummy. I didn't know what was going on. Dummy. I hoped that they ran away for good. Dummy. To be safe. I went to the kitchen window and looked out. This one didn't have a curtain or blinds. Why? I realized about halfway to the window that there was a face on the other side. I could see it even through the blur created by the rain on the window. Bro, how are you, how is this happening? How is, how is all this happening to you? Why, bro, stop investigating. This is ridiculous. This is, <laughs> you keep checking every window like they ain't there. We know they're there. Question is, what weapon do you have to protect yourself and your wife? Or your girlfriend, or whoever. Oh. I yelled at the top of my lungs, Yo, go away, trying to sound scary. They didn't move. Of course they did. When I say this, I know it sounds incredibly cliche, but we don't have Wi-Fi in the home, and the cell reception is very on and off. During a storm like this, there was no reception at all for either of us. Oh, you're screwed. There was my dad's rifle under the bed in the bedroom, though. Good. I left the kitchen and hurried to the bedroom where Cass was sitting in the bed biting her nails on edge. I grabbed the rifle under the bed from its case since we hadn't yet taken it out. There was a magazine already loaded with rounds, thankfully. Let's so go. So I popped the mag in the rifle. Let's go. Doing this in front of Cass obviously meant I was no longer sugarcoating what was going on. Yep. But it didn't matter because there was suddenly a bang at the bedroom window. Yep. Something was either thrown or someone straight up banged their hand on it. And then a second later, there was a bang from another window out in the living room or kitchen. Here we go. There's multiple. They're, you're surrounded, bro. You are surrounded. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're surrounded. It was more than one person. This had gone far enough at this point. I told Cassidy to wait in the bedroom. I went to the front door and positioned myself to be ready to potentially fire at anyone on the other side of the door should they rush me. I quietly unlocked the door, and when I was close enough to mentally ready, I yanked the door open. You, you, you unlocked the door? Why are you going out, bro? I drew my rifle up, pointing at the door. No one was there, and so I hurried outside with adrenaline controlling my actions and spun around quickly to ensure no one was on the deck. Then I went to the stairway and looked down, and there was that guy in bright colored clothes standing where he was before outside the window, apparently trying to look scary. He looked up at me. He already knew I was outside, but I doubt he knew I had a gun. I shot the rifle into the air, and I heard the guy yell in a deep voice, Oh shit, 
as he ran away into the darkness. Yeah. I heard at least two fading yelling voices likely communicating to each other, and then it was just the sound of the storm again. I don't know how many people were out there. At least two, maybe even three. It could have been teenagers playing some fucked up prank, or it could have been some really messed up people trying to scare us and break in. I don't play around like that though. If anyone came up that deck while I was outside, I would have shot them dead. They were not there seeking help, and that is a 100% certainty. Obviously. The next day was Sunday, and so we packed up and left. There were no signs of anything having been done to my car or the home or anything from the night before. I made sure to lock everything up and take anything of particular value home this time. This is not worth Out of it, of all bro. the years of my family owning the place, that was the only encounter like this any of us had ever had. It really put a bad taste in my mouth about the place and being in an isolated place. I've been up there a few times since with my family. Wow. I would never, ever go alone. Bruh, like this is, this is, bro, yeah, you don't go alone. Why would anybody want to do this alone? Why would anybody have the guts to do this alone? What? You got me all the way messed up. I am never doing this alone. Ever. God have mercy upon us. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> yeah, bro. I wouldn't even go outside. I wouldn't even want, attempt to go outside. I'm staying by my side by my wife as these stupid fools try to bang on the door and try to play some prank or whatever who knows i might even try to send shots on the roof just in case no i'm not gonna do that <laughs> i ain't gonna do that. i ain't gonna try to damage the property but like seriously though this is freaking <laughs> this is freaking something else um yeah i'll catch you guys in the next video guys um yeah lock your doors lock your vents lock your windows Always have that gun prepared. Always got that weapon prepared on you. People are sick in the head. <laughs> people are sick in the head. We live in a world where people can get away with so much foolishness. It's unbelievable. Stay, stay ready. Stay prepared. You feel me? Stay safe. I'll catch you guys later. Take care. God bless. Peace. You win. Perfect.